I killed, did you get it? So today's lecture is on test number four review. So test number four will cover topics from chapter eight and chapter 10. So I provided the worksheets on this week's module. So make sure you download that. So that's what we're gonna go over in today's lecture. So let's go over the chapter eight worksheet first. So chapter eight are topics on hypothesis testing. Right. Number one, at a water bottling facility, a technician is testing a bottle filling machine that is supposed to deliver 1,000 milliliters of water. The technician dispenses 49 samples of water and determines the volume of each sample. The 49 samples have a mean volume of X bar, which represents a sample mean, equal to 1,001.0 milliliter. The machine is out of calibration if the mean volume differs from 1,000 milliliter. So the technician wants to perform a hypothesis test to determine whether the ma machine is out of calibration, state the appropriate null and alternative hypotheses. So just identify the null and the alternative hypotheses. So what's the parameter that we're testing here? We're testing the mean, right? Yes. So which is mu. And we're assuming that the mean volume in this bottling facility is what? 1,000 milliliter or 1,000 ml. So 1,000 milliliter. So what's the other claim that the technician wants to perform? That it's not equal to because it differs right. from. Right. That it, so if it's, it's out of calibration, if it differs from 1,000 milliliter. So here's the keyword here. So therefore, the alternative claim is that it's not equal to 1,000 milliliter. So that will be what part or choice, right? And what type of test will this, not equal to, and what type of test will this be? Two um, test. T test. T test, because, test, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you meant if we were going to use Z stat or T stat to calculate. So, so in this question, just state the null and alternative hypotheses. If we were okay. to do the other step, then you would use the T stat, right? Yes. So, okay, but here, just state, so basically just do step one, state the null hypotheses and the alternative hypotheses. So same thing for part two or problem number two, just state the null and alternative hypotheses. So number two, 46% of people believe there is life on other planets in the universe. A scientist does not agree with this finding. He surveyed 130 randomly selected individuals and found that 44 believe that there is life on other planets. State the null and alternative hypotheses. So we're assuming that the proportion who believes that life exists on other planet is what? 46%, right? Yes. But the scientist claim does not agree. So does not agree. So it's not saying that it's less than that or greater than that. So therefore will be the alternative hypothesis that it's what? Not, not equal to. Not equal to that, right? So. Right. So make sure you familiarize yourself with the wording that they use in this type of problem. So if it doesn't say less than this or greater than that, always assume that it's a two-tail test. It's a safe assumption that it's a two-tail test. So that's C. Three, state the appropriate null and alternative hypotheses again. So this time, testing the variance. So find the critical or, and then find the critical value for a right tail test with alpha equal to 0 0.05 and N equals to 18. Use 
sig variance squared equal to, or variance equal to 196. So it's a right tail test. So therefore, the null hypothesis is we're assuming that the variance is equal to 196. And since it's telling us that it's a right tail test, that means the alternative hypothesis is we're trying to find evidence that it's greater than this, right? So it's a right tail test as given. And now what critical value would you use for a right tail test having a level of significance of 0 0.05? So find the critical value for a right tail test and a level of significance of 0 0.05. And recall with variance and standard deviation, which table do we use? We use the chi-square table, right? So to find the critical value that you would use, use the chi-square table. And chi-square, unlike the T or normal table, is right skewed. So right tail test, meaning the level of significance 0 0.05 represents the area to the right. So using stat crunch, find the critical value, and also you need the degree of freedom, right? So find the critical value such that the area to the right is 0 0.05. And if the sample size is 18, that means the degree of freedom will be 17. So we still remember the sequence of steps here, right? Stat, calculators, and then chi-square to get to the chi-square calculator. So stat, calculators, chi-square. Area, so degree of freedom is 17. You want the area to the right, so that's greater than, and on that last box, type in the level of significance, which is 0 0.05. Compute, so we get 27.587. So that would be what B, right? Or sorry, A. So that would be A. Number four, so this is concept type of question. Right? If we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true, then we have made what type of error? You made a type one error, right? Yes. So rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true means you made a type one error. So it's like if the null hypothesis is assuming someone is not guilty, if you made a type one error, that means you convicted that person. When in actuality, that person is not guilty. All right, number five, if we do not reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is in error, then we have made what type of error? Type two. Type two error, right? So that was from, those were from section 8.1, right? When I discussed the difference between type one and type two error. Number six, so now let's get to the hypothesis testing part part of this worksheet. Reginald Brown, an, an expector from the Department of Weights and Measures, 
weighed 15 18 ounces cereal box of cornflakes. He found their mean weight to be 17.8 ounces with a standard deviation of 0.4 ounces. At level of significance of 0.01, are the cereal boxes lighter than they should be? So it's advertised that the cereal box should weigh what? 18 ounces. 18 ounce. So the claim is that it's lighter than 18 ounce, right? So again, I like to write down what hypothesis tests I'm performing. So the claim is that the cereal box, the average weight, that the cereal box mean weight, it's lighter, and by lighter meaning it's less than the 18 ounce that it's advertised, right? So that's that's what we're gonna answer at the end. So we're hard way, and then I'll go over how to plug it in in StatCrunch to verify your test statistic and your p-value. So step one, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So again, we're testing for the mean. So we're assuming that the average weight of those cereal boxes are 18 ounces. Our inspector here claims that it's lighter, so therefore he's testing the claim that it's less than 18 ounce. So this would be what type of test? It's a left tail test. So this would be a left tail test. Step two, if you're doing the critical value method to determine whether to reject or not reject, find the critical value. So here, this is a right left tail test. And the level of significance that they want us to use is 0 0.01. And which table are we going to use here? You're going to use the T table, right? Since the, what do you call it? The standard population deviation. standard deviation is not given, right? Oh, OK. So you're going to use the T table since, right? since the population since that 0 0.04 represents this sample standard deviation of the 15 that, that were weighted. So that 0 0.4 does not represent the population standard deviation. That's the sample standard deviation. So therefore you use the T table. So if, the, if sigma is not given, the 0 0.4 is uh, a standard deviation or it's that's the S. sample s right it's s okay it's s right had that been the population standard deviation then you would we would have used the z table to find the critical value instead and the degree of freedom what's the sample size here so he weighed 15 of those cereal boxes. So therefore the degree of freedom is 14. So you're gonna use the T table. So I'll just open up the T calculator. And this time the level significance represents the area to the left. So 0 0.01. Let me just write the answer here. So 
right? When you open up your tea calculator, and let me just do it real quick. It's negative 2.624. So stat calculators T. It's the area to the left. So less than degree of freedom is 14. Area to the left is 0 0.01. So negative 2.624 and so on. Let me round that to three decimal place. So I use the T calculator to find that number. So that's step two, step three. Compute the test statistic. And again, here, the population standard deviation is not given. So you use the T formula which is given by X bar minus the mean all over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And we're given all the numbers here, right? So the sample mean of the 15 that he weighed is 17.8 ounces. Mu is the assumption that we had for the null hypothesis, that's 18 ounces. S is 0.4, right? That's the sample standard deviation. And sample size is 15. Plug that in, 17.8 minus 18, all over 0.4 divided by square root of 15. And be careful when you're plugging that in in your calculators. Let me just write down what you should get. So when you plug that in in your calculator and round it to three decimal place, you should get negative 1.936. So that would be your test statistic, right? So that's step three. Step four. So use either critical value method or p-value method. Of course, p-value method is always the easiest if you're using stat crunch, but let's show both. So critical value method. So just redraw the diagram from step two. So again, the critical value is negative 2.624. Does my test statistic lie in that region? No, right? It's gonna be two, T equals negative 1.936 will be to the right of that number. So it won't lie in that shaded region. So it'll be slightly to its right. So it'll be somewhere here. So T equals negative 1.936 lies outside. That shaded region, so therefore our conclusion is what do not reject. So, so or fail, fail to reject. Or fail to reject, right? I think your homework, in your homework problem, they use the term fail to reject. So do not reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that's or because there is the not sufficient evidence. Right, so in step five, right, there's no sufficient evidence. Or the p-value method. So our test statistic is negative 1.936. And again, this is what type of test? A, a left tail test. So how do you find the p-value? Use the T calculator, right? Use the T calculator or the T table to find the area to the left 
of negative 1.936, and that will represent your p-value. Again, the degree of freedom is 14. So find the area to the left of our test statistic of t equals negative 1.936. So again, stat calculator is T. Area to the left, degree of freedom is 14. So again, make sure right, it's pointing at less than or equal to since you're looking for area to the left. And then type in the test statistic, negative 1.936. So that would be your p-value, so 0 0.03 three, six, seven, rounded to four decimal places. So point zero, three, six, seven is my p-value. And then what do we do with that number? You compare it to the level of significance, right? So is the p-value less than the level of significance. If so, reject. If not, do not reject. So it's 0 0.0367, less than the level of significance of 0 0.01. And the answer there is no. So therefore, fail to reject or do not reject the null hypotheses, right? So therefore in step five, so right on the last quiz that some of you guys took, right? I noticed that you have everything down, but you had the wrong conclusion in the end. So if you do not reject, that means there is no sufficient evidence, right? So do not reject the null hypothesis. It means there is no sufficient evidence for the claim that it's less than 18 ounce so at a level of significance of 0 0.01. Since we did not reject the claim or we did not reject the null hypothesis, it means that there is no sufficient evidence. So not rejecting the null hypothesis means there, there's no sufficient evidence that Again, the claim is that it's it's lighter, that it's less than eight, 18 ounce. So there is no sufficient evidence that the cereal box is less than 18 ounces. So based on the data that was collected, there is no sufficient evidence to prove that claim. And right. Professor, I noticed that in the uh, the quiz and in the homework, the end of that question, they add that third option for a drop down box is or is not. Uh, I did notice that there was a tricky part too, where in the last part of the phrasing on a two tailed test question, they put, um, and so the last part is reject because there is sufficient evidence that such and such is uh, and then is not correct, is equal to, and then the option is, is this correct or is it not correct? So it gets really confusing at the end there. Yeah, so yeah, you kind of have to be careful with the wording. Yeah, like you have to read it really carefully. But the most important thing here is, right, if you're not rejecting the null hypothesis, that means that there is no sufficient evidence. So however they may word it, on the homework problem or test problem, right? Do not reject the null hypothesis means no sufficient evidence. So again, this is how you would do it the long way. How would you do it the short way using StatCrunch? Using StatCrunch to verify your test statistic. So the number that we got in step three, 
verify this statistic. And if you're doing the p-value method, getting the p-value. So you remember the sequence of steps here. So it's stat. And again, since the population standard deviation is not given, we use T, T stat, right? Since population standard deviation is not given or unknown. And one sample. And in this example, it's with summary. And then you're just gonna type in the numbers that they want, right? So it's this one is with summary. And when you open that up, so stat, T stats, one sample with summary. So it'll ask for the sample mean, which is 17.8. The sample standard deviation, which is 0.4. The sample size, which is 15. And again, we're doing a hypothesis test. So we're assuming that it's 18 ounces and we're trying to show that it's less than 18 ounce. Let me just copy and paste this before I press compute. Press compute, and that's what we should get, right? So again, sometimes it may not exactly be the number that we got using manual calculation, but it should be really, really close. And since sometimes if we round off some of our numbers, it may not be exactly what we get here. So here's my T statistic and that's my P value. So P value, what do we got? So negative 0.0367, they got 0 0.0366. So again, really close. And test statistic, negative 1.936 and negative 1.936, right? So you can always verify your answer using stat crunch. Number seven, identify the null alternative test statistic p-value, conclusion about the null hypothesis, and then final conclusion that address the original claim. Number seven, an article in a journal report reports that 34% of American fathers take no responsibility for childcare. A researcher claims that the figure is higher for fathers in the town of Littleton. A random sample of 234 fathers from Lowton yielded 96 who did not help with childcare. So test the researcher's claim at the 0 0.05 significance level. So again, just identify what the claim is. So here the claim is that the proportion of fathers in Lowton who takes no responsibility is higher than that 34%. So the proportion in this town, Lawton, If 
help. Out there. Yes, higher than the reported 34%. So that should give us a clue on how to set up our null and alternative hypotheses. So step, step one, state the null and alternative hypotheses. So what parameter are we testing here? Mean, proportion, or standard deviation? We're testing for proportion this time, right? So P, and some book use the symbol pi. So if you see pi in some book, that's the symbol that they use for proportion. So in our textbook, we use P. So P is equal to, let's convert that into decimal. So 0.34. And again, the claim is that it's higher. So this would be a right tail test. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna do the p-value method. So I'm gonna skip step two. So I'm gonna compute the test statistic. So the test statistic formula for testing for proportion is P, or sorry, it's Z. So be Z is equal to P hat minus P all over the square root of P times Q all over N. Let's write down the numbers that we're going to plug in. So P hat is the sample proportion from Littleton. So again, they surveyed 234 and 96 do not help with child care. So 96 out of 234, which is 0 0.04012. P is what we're assuming the proportion to be, which is 0.34. And Q is one minus P, which is 0.66. And again, the sample size is 234. So let's plug this in. 0.4012 minus 0.34 all over 34 times 0.66 divided by 234 inside the, the square root. And when you plug that in and your calculator, you should get 2.27. Let me round this up to two decimal places. So you should get 2.27, so that's my test statistic. Again, I'm just gonna do the p-value method. Doing the p-value method, so find the p-value for that test statistic. So again, this is a right tail test. And our test statistic is 2.27, right? So which table are we gonna use? The Z table or the normal table. So, right, the formula itself kind of gives you a clue on which table to use to, for the p-value. So to find the p-value, use the Z table or the normal table. and find the area. So this is a right tail test. So find the area to the right of our test statistic, 2.27. And that will represent the p-value.
and we'll find the area to the right of 2.27. So the stat calculator normal. So area to the right of 2.27. Is what? Point zero one one. So you should get point zero one. Point zero one one six. Put that right. Hold on. So 0 0.0116. And again, using a p-value method, you compare that to the level of significance. So my p-value is 0 0.0116. So again, it's the p-value less than Alpha so is 0 0.0116 less than the level of significance, which was what, 0 0.05? And the answer there is yes. So if the p value is less than the level of significance, we do what? Reject. To the null hypothesis. You reject it. And if you're rejecting the null hypothesis, that means there is sufficient evidence. So, so at a level of significance of 0 0.05, since we rejected the null hypothesis, that means there is sufficient evidence. And I'm just gonna write like just the general statement that it's higher, that the proportion of men who takes no responsibility at Wilton is higher. Is sufficient evidence that it's higher. In Wilton, as far as and the fathers who take no responsibility. So it's higher than the 34% that's reported. And if you want to verify that using StatCrunch, your test statistic and your p-value. So stat, proportion stats. This is one sample with summary. So stat proportion stats, one sample with summary. So the number of successes so from our given data, it was 96 out of the 234 takes no responsibility. So 96 out of 234. We're assuming that it's 34%. So make sure you write that in decimal form. And our claim is that it's greater than that in the town of Lowton. So that's how you're going to enter that and stat crunch, let me copy and paste it. Press compute. 
And we got the same number, right? All right. That'll be close to what we got. And here's our test statistic and our p-value, right? Number eight. And a clinical study of an allergy drug, 108 of the 202 subjects reported experiencing significant relief from their symptoms. At the 0 0.01 significance level, tests the claim that more than half of all those using the drug experienced relief. So again, we're testing for a proportion here. So our claim is that more than half of those using the drug experienced relief That's the question that we're going to address at the end. And again, I'm just going to do the p-value method for the sake of time. State the null and alternative hypotheses. So again, we're testing for proportion. So we're assuming that the proportion is what? 0.5. Half. Right, half, right, 0.5. And our claim is that more than half experience relief from taking that drug. So greater than 0.5. So this would be a right tail test. So this is similar to what we just did in the previous problem. Compute the test statistic. And Z is equal to P hat minus P all over the square root of P times Q all over N. So our P hat here is what 108 out of the 202 experience relief, right? Which is 0.5347. And again, P is what we wrote in our, our null hypotheses. So we're assuming that it's 0.5. U is one minus P, so 0.5. Sample size is 202. Plug in the numbers. So 0.5347 minus 0.5 on top divided by the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 all over 202. And when you plug that in, in your calculator, you should get 0.99. That's the number that you should get. So Z is equal to Point nine nine. Again, I'll just do the p value method. So once you have your test statistic, right, to find the p value, find the area to the what? In this case, since it's a right tail test, find the area to the right. So it's a right tail test. And our test statistic is 0.99. So we'll find the area to the right of your test statistic of 0 0.99. Again, using the normal table. Let's 
structural diagram. So an area to the right of 0.99. And we've done this countless of times, so I'm just going to write down what the answer will be. So your p-value should be 0 0.1611. So that's your p-value. So the area to the right of your test statistic, since this is a right tail test, is 0 0.1611. Compare that to the level of significance. So is 0 0.1611 less than what level of significance do you want? 0 0.01. And the answer here is no, right? And again, if it's no, then do not reject. Or in your textbook, I think they use the term fail to reject. So fail to reject or do not reject the null hypotheses. And if you do not reject, that means there is what? No sufficient evidence. So at a level of significance of 0 0.01, There is no sufficient evidence that well, I got the question. It was uh, the more than half, right? There is no sufficient evidence that more than half. More than half experience belief after taking the drug. And again, let's just confirm our test statistic and our p-value in StatCrunch using StatCrunch. And stat proportion stats one sample. with summary. So it's that proportion stats, one sample with summary. So again, they took 108, who took the drug experience relief out of those 202 people. So it's already a 0.5 or Alternative hypothesis is that it's greater than 0.5. I'm just going to press compute here. So copy and paste that. So it's the same number, right? So we got 0.99 in our computation. Here it's 0.98. Five, if you round that to two decimal places, 0.99. And we got what, 0 0.1611 for the p-value, they got 0 0.1623. So again, since we rounded off our test statistic, so sometimes it's not gonna be exactly what we have here in StatCrunch, but they should be really, really close. Number nine, a test of sobriety involves measuring the subject's motor skills. 20 randomly selected sober subjects take the test and produce a mean score of 41 with a standard deviation of 3.7. At the 0 0.01 level of significance, tests that claim that the true mean score for all sober subject is equal to 35. 
So we're testing for the mean here. So the claim is that the true mean score all silver subject is equal 35. And again, notice in this problem, it's not asking or it hasn't, it doesn't have the word that it's less than that or greater than that. So therefore assume that it's a two-tailed test that our claim is that it's not equal to 35. So we're assuming that the mean is 35. Our claim is that it's not equal to that. So this would be a two-tailed test. Again, I'm just gonna do the p-value method. My test statistic. And in this problem is the population standard deviation given? No, right? The standard deviation of 3.7, that represents the standard deviation from the 20 that were randomly selected. So that 3.7 represents sample standard deviation. So that's S. Yeah, instead of sigma, right? Right, so sigma is not given. So if it's not given, you use the T formula. So just X bar minus the mean all over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of it. So sample mean is 41. Again, mu is what we're assuming it to be 35. Sample standard deviation is 3.7. And the sample size is 20. So they took a random sample of 20. So let's plug that in. So T is equal to 41 minus 35 all over 3.7. I squared a 20. And when you plug that in, you should get 7.252. And the larger that number is, that means the more likely you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So that's pretty big, right? As far as the test statistic for for the mean. So find the p-value. This is the p-value since that number is pretty large. It's going to be a lot of zeros in the beginning before you even get to the first non-zero digit. So again, this is a right tail test, or this is a two tail test, sorry. With the test statistic being 2.252. So to find the p-value, find the area to the right. So you wanna find the area to the right of that number and then double it. Since if you find the area to its left and double it, you're going to get a number greater than one. Your p-value should never be greater than one. So if you type down a number that's greater than one for your p-value, you did something incorrect. So find the area to the right. I wrote down the right. It's not 2.252. It's 7.252. So find the area to the right up to, well, 
point two five two. Then double it. Then T calculator. So that's going to be area to the right of that. going to be a number with a lot of zeros in the beginning. Yeah, it's like 0 0.6 0.6 and 3.5. So calculators uh, T area to the, so degree of freedom is 19. So the sample, did I have that right? So, uh, yes. 19, right? So sample size is 20 area to the right. So make sure it's pointing at greater than or equal to and 7.252, right? So how many zeros is that before you get to three, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, five. So six zeros before you get to three, five. So 0 0.0000. .000 zero zero three five or in scientific notation how would you write this three point five times ten to the negative, negative seven, seven right so that's how you would write that in scientific notation that that would be its equivalent in scientific notation since you would need to move the decimal point seven times to the right to get to a number that's between one and 10. So, and when you double that, it's still a pretty small number. So our P value is two times that number. So it's still a number with a lot of zeros, which is, I guess just 0 0.000, 000 so four zeros, three five, that's 70, so seven, which is clearly less than the level of significance. So that's my p-value. So 0 0.0000007, less than the level of significance, which is 0 0.01. Yes. And again, if it's less than, reject the null hypotheses. Again, if you're rejecting the null hypotheses, that means there is sufficient evidence. So at 0 0.01, there is sufficient evidence that, uh, what are we claiming here again? The, the true mean score is not equal to 35 is or different from 35 as far as the the, the sobriety tests so true mean score So we have found sufficient evidence for our alternative hypotheses. Okay. 
And in StatCrunch, let's verify those numbers in StatCrunch. So again, it's stat, is stat, since the population standard deviation is not given. On sample, and summary. Stat, T stats, one sample with summary. So again, the sample mean, what was it again? Three point forty-one. Forty-one. Sample standard deviation is three point seven. Sample size is 20. Change this to 35, that's 35, compute. And we should get the same number, right? So 7252, right? That's the same number that we got for our test statistic. Right. And in StatCrunch, right, they just put less than 0 0.001. So that means it has at least four zeros before you even get to a non-zero digit is what that means. So they don't type down like 0, 0.0 with six zeros until you get to that seven, right? Instead, they use that number if there's like four deaths, if there are four zeros in the beginning, they just use that notation less than 0 0.001, right, to indicate that. And the last problem here, number 10, and a test of computer component is found that the mean time between failure is 520, 520 hours. A modification is made which supposed to increase the time between failures. Tests on random sample of 10 modified components resulted in the following times between failures. At a 0 0.05 significance level, test the claim for the modified component that the mean time between failure is greater than 520 hours. So again, we're testing for the mean. So we're testing that the mean time between failure is greater than 520 hours. So that's our claim. So we're testing for the mean. So the null hypothesis is mu is equal to 520. Our claim is that it's greater than that. Again, I'm just gonna do the p-value method Right, my test statistic. So it's equal to, again, X bar minus the mean all over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So we're, we're given a raw data here, right, of those 10 samples. So, we need to find X bar and S, right? So using that sample data, you know, we still remember how to do that, the summary stats. And I've already typed in the data here under the first column labeled hours. So stat, summary stats columns. I want the summary stat to find the mean and the standard deviation. So here's the mean that I want 537.1. And 
and the sample standard deviation 20.701. And we needed to find those two numbers first. And this and mu is what we're assuming the mean to be, which is 520. Let's type here just to see white tail test. And sample size is 10. Plug in the numbers. So 537.1 minus 520 all over 20.701 divided by a square root of 10. And when you plug that in, what should you get? 2.612. So this is what you should get. So 2.612. Let's use the p-value method again. So we have our test statistic, t equals 2.612. And again, this is a right tail test since we're, proving, we're trying to prove the claim that it's greater than 520 hours. So find the area to the right of 2.612 using your T calculator. So now let me just draw a diagram. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to write down what the answer will be. So when you use your T calculator, the area to the right, you should get 0 0.0141. So that would be my P value. And again, you compare that to the level of significance. So it's, it's 0 0.0141 less than the level of significance of 0 0.05. And the answer there is yes. So therefore we do what? We reject the null hypotheses. So at a level of significance, of 0 0.05, there is sufficient evidence that, where is it again? That the mean time between failures It's greater than five hundred twenty hours. And to verify that in stat crunch, Again, we're testing for the mean, so stat sigma is not given, so T stat one sample and with summary. Or, sorry, this is with data, right? Yes, with data. You can actually use which you can actually choose which summary also right you would just plug in the x bar and the s that we got but here since we were given the raw data we'll just pick with data so 
So stat, key stats, one sample with data. So again, it's the hours. Noon is not equal to 520. We're trying to prove that it's greater than 520. Compute. Uh, there's our T step and our P value. And one more question here in chapter eight worksheet. So number 11, for the selected, for randomly selected adults IQ scores are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 15. The scores of 14 randomly selected college students are listed below use a 0 0.10 significance level to test the claim that the standard deviation of IQ scores of college student is less than 15. So we're testing for standard deviation. So that's the parameter that we're testing here, that the standard deviation is less than 15. So how would you set up your null? and alternative hypotheses, so standard deviation, sigma. So we're assuming it's 15. Our claim is that it's less than 15. So this is a left tail test. Statistic. Since chi squared is equal to what n minus one times s squared divided by sigma squared. So sample size, how many in that raw data? 14. So there's a total of 14 there. We're given sigma. Right, that's our null hypothesis. So we're assuming that it's 15. And when you square that, what's 15 squared to 25? We need to find S and S squared, right? So since we're given the raw data, find the sample standard deviation and the variance of that raw data. And again, I've already typed in the numbers in this second column, so stat. Summary stats, columns, IQ scores. So here's the standard deviation, 9.819. And when you square that number, you get the variance, which is the number next to it, the 96.8. 417, let me round that to three decimal place. So 96.418. Let's plug that in. I squared is equal to 14 minus one, so 13 times S squared, 96.418 divided by sigma squared, which is 225. And when you plug that in, you should get 5.571, right? So that's my test statistic. Let's find the p-value. Five point five seven one. This is a right tail test or left tail, sorry. So we're trying to prove that it's less than. So it's a left tail test. So find the area to the left of five point five seven one using your chi square calculator. And you should get what's that calculator? 
chi square. So degree of freedom is 13. Five point five seven one. To get point zero three nine six. So that's my p value. Compare that to the level of significance. So it's point zero three nine six less than 0.1? And the answer is yes. It's 0.1, right? So they want us to use 0.1 as a level of significance, so yes. So therefore, reject the null hypothesis. So there is sufficient, le sufficient evidence. At 0 0.1, there is sufficient evidence. The standard deviation is less than 15. And how would you verify that in StatCrunch? Variance. So stat, variance stats, one sample. And again, in this example, we're given the raw data. So with data, Stat, <coughs> stat, variant stats, <coughs> one sample with data, so like Q scores. And again, notice here, they want you to input the variance, right? It says sigma squared. So here we put 15, right? So you need to square that, since if you put 15 there, it's going to give you a different number. So 15 squared is 225. And let's say left tail test. And this is what you should get. So again, when you're performing tests for variance or standard deviation, make sure you input the numbers correctly. So you input the variance, not the standard deviation. So make sure you type in 225 and not 15. And oops. So, so same number that we got. All right, so that's chapter eight. Let's, let's go to chapter 10. I think chapter 10 should be a lot quicker. So number one, blank is a statistical method to determine whether a relationship exists between two variables. So that's what correlation or linear relationship, linear correlation. Two, in a blank relationship, as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So that's a negative linear relationship, right? So C. So when you draw a scatter plot for that one, it looks like this. So it follows a linear pattern, but it's decreasing. So such linear relationship is what we refer to as negative linear relationship. Three, 
the two variables in a scatter plot are called what? Independent. X and y. Or, uh, independent event. Right, X, the X and Y, which we also refer to as independent and dependent variable. Number four, determine the type of relationship. So it looks like it follow a straight line pattern. So what that would be what? A positive linear relationship. Number five, compute the value of the correlation coefficient. So in chapter 10, there's basically just one stat crunch sequence that you need to remember, which is stat regression and simple linear. So I'll compute the value of the correlation coefficient. So type in all the X values under one column and type in all the Y column or all the Y values next to it. So I've already typed it in here. So the one labeled number five X bar and number five Y bar. Let me just copy and paste it for this first example. So I'll we'll type in the numbers and then follow that sequ those sequence of steps. So stat down here, regression, simple linear. And then just choose where you typed in the numbers, which column. Oops. And again, that's all you need to fill out here, right? Which which is your X variable column and which is your Y variable column. Compute. So again, it's going to give you two pages of result. Correlation coefficient is this number. So 0.864. Let me just type that in or insert that here. Option D. What was that? Oh, I copy. think it was one of the options you could, uh, if you scroll oh, up those. Let me just copy and paste that part. So here's my linear correlation coefficient, which is D, right? So 0.864. Okay. So again, as far as chapter 10, Right, when you're doing it in stat crunch, when you're plugging in the numbers in stat crunch, that's the only sequence of steps that you need to remember. So that's number five. Number six, when R is not significantly, sign when R is not, sign let me try that again. When R is not significantly different from zero, the best predictor of Y is the what? So what meaning if there's right. So meaning if R is not significant, meaning there's no linear correlation to predict values for any X, you take the mean of all the Y values. So the best predictor of Y is the mean of the data values of Y. should be the best predictor for X. So the best predictor for X is the mean of the data values of Y, right? So that's from a concept from section 10.2, right? So I'll recall, let me just write that down. If R is not significant, We use the mean of all the Y values. So meaning Y bar. As the 
yes. Addicted. Values for X. So instead of using the equation to predict values for X, just take the average of all the Y values if R is not significant. And an example of that will be in problem number seven. So for example, four pairs of data yield R equals 0.942. So that's the linear correlation coefficient. And the regression Y is equal to 3X. Also Y bar, so that's the mean of all the Y values is 12.75. What is the predicted, what is the best predicted value of Y for X equal 4.6? So some of you may be just be tempted to just plug in 4.6 into that equation. First thing you need to determine is, is R significant? Meaning this linear correlation exists. So it's R significant. Okay. And I'm gonna use the critical value method. And I'm, we're just gonna assume that the level of significance is 0 0.05. And again, my linear correlation here is 0.942. So applying the critical value that corresponds to this and what's the sam and also the sample size, how many pair, four pairs of data. And if you remember for degree of freedom here, it's what N minus two for linear correlation coefficient or for linear correlation to find the degree of freedom, you subtract two from the sample size. So there's a table that I provided under files. So make sure you download that, the correlation coefficient. Got it in front of me right now. <laughs> right. So, so what's the critical value? That corresponds to 0 0.05, having a degree of freedom of 2, 0.95. So 0.95 is what we're going to compare that to. Point 0.95. And how do we do the critical value method here? You take the absolute value of R. So it's the absolute value of R greater than the critical value. If so, linear correlation exists. If not, linear correlation does not exist. So it's the absolute value of 0.942 greater than 0.95. No. No, right? No. So therefore, linear correlation does not exist. Between those two variables. And if linear correlation does not exist, that means that linear correlation is not significant. And if it's not significant, right, what we just wrote down, what I just wrote down in the previous problem, use the mean of all the Y values as your best predictor. So therefore, for X equals to 4.6, instead of plugging that in into the equation of y equals 3x, you're gonna take the mean of all the y values as your best predicted value, as your best predictor. That's a uh, y bar, correct? Y bar, right. 
had that been significant, then you would have plugged that in, you would have plugged in the 4.6 into the equation. But since it's not significant, since linear correlation does not exist, there's no evidence, sufficient evidence for that, use Y bar as your best predicted value for any values for X, right? So again, this is more of a concept type of question, right? Understanding the concept behind linear correlation. Number eight, the table below shows the ages in pounds of nine randomly selected tennis coaches. So age and weight. So first let's find R and then determine whether linear correlation exists or not. That's my R value here. So again, for the sake of time, I've already typed in the numbers. So age and weight, so stat, <clears throat> regression, simple linear, age for X variable, weight for the Y variable, and your linear correlation should be this number, R is equal to 0.959. Let's copy and paste that. Wait, nine, five. And let me round this off to three decimal place. Right, make sure you follow whatever rounding rule they set on your homework or on your exam. So if I round this off to three decimal place, it will be 9.960. And even though it's close to positive one, I still need to determine whether linear correlation exists or not. Right. So you can do the critical value method or the p-value method. So the critical value method. Again, let's use a level of significance of 0 0.05. So there's nine pairs. So the degree of freedom will be seven. So that's the number that we're gonna use. This is number, so 666. So it's the absolute value of 0 0.960 greater than 0 0.666. And the answer there is yes. So therefore linear relation exists. So so there's part A where it, you have the right linear correlation, but it says no linear relation exists. So it'll be B, so choice B. R equals 0 0.960 and linear relation exists. Okay. Or if you wanna do the p-value method also, to determine whether linear relationship exists. Let me just do that in this problem. So again, the other information that they provide here is the p-value, which is the second part here. And here's the p-value which is 0 .00, less than 0 0.01 which means there's at least four zeros before you get to the first non-zero digit. And is that less than the level of significance? Yes. So therefore linear correlation exists.
So linear relationship exists. So you can do the critical value method where you use the table that I provided or use the p-value method right, using stat crunch to determine whether a linear relationship exists or not. Right? So number nine is the same question, same type of question. So determine whether linear relationship exists between number of years with a company and number of sales. So again, you guys should be familiar with the sequence of steps by now. I'm just gonna write down my R. So again, I've already typed in the numbers here, years with a company and sales. So stat, again, regression, simple linear, years with the company and number of sales, compute 0.632. So that's my R. So R is equal to 0.632, right? And again, and we need to determine whether linear relationship exists or not. So let's just do the p-value method. So do the critical value method or the p-value, but p-value, just need to find that here, 0 0.0678. Zero six seven eight. So I'll compare that to the again. Let's just assume that the level of significance is 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.0678 less than 0 0.05, and the answer here is what? No. So therefore, no correlation. So R is not significant. So 0 0.632, but linear correlation does not exist. So that would be D. How many more here? Two more. Number 10, find the equation of the regression line. So again, same sequence of steps. Stat, regression. Simple linear. So I'll type in all the x values under one column and type in all the y values on the column next to it, which I've already done here. So it's the one labeled 10x bar and 10y bar. So stat regression, simple linear. X bar. And Y bar. Oops. And what number are we looking for here? So again, there's a lot of numbers that they provided. So the equation is given by y hat is equal to a plus bx, where a is the y-intercept, and the number next to x is the slope. So in this result page, this would be my a, and this will be my b. So the equation is y, y hat is equal to negative 5.525, how many? So negative 5.25 plus the slope 5.504x. 
So don't switch those two numbers. And that will be choice what? Uh, C. They just uh, D. No, they just wrote it uh, backwards. Oh, they so 5.504 X. Oh, that's, that's, I see. That's the slope, right? So, so make sure you right, you be careful with the numbers or when you're looking at the numbers. They just wrote it differently backwards. So they just switch those two numbers. So they wrote the slope first next to that X. Yeah. So you can write the 5.504X and then the Y intercept at the end, 5.525, so same thing. So again, the slope is the number that goes next to the X and the intercept or the Y intercept is just the number by itself. So, and the last problem here, predict and so years and contribution that are follow years and contribution. So predict the contribution if X is equal to four. Well, again, from the previous problem, right? First, we need to determine whether R is significant. So first, since if it's not significant, then you would use the mean of all the Y values. So first determine whether R is significant. So find the value of R. So what's the linear correlation coefficient? So type in all the years on one column and the contribution next to it. And I've already typed it in here. So stat regression, simple linear, years, contribution. And my R value is negative 0.883. Negative point eight eight three. So is that significant? So use the p value method. That's my p value here. It's point zero one nine eight. So you want the second one, right? That's the p value that you want the one on the row, the one on the same row with slope. So 0 0.0198 is my p-value. 0 0.0198 and it's that So if you're doing the p-value, you compare it to the level of significance, which here, if it's not given, always assume it's 0.5 and the answer is yes. So therefore linear relation exists or R is significant. So therefore we can use the equation. So we can use equation predict and x is equal to four. So first write down what the equation is. So let's write down the equation. So again, A represents the slope. which is this, 450, or sorry, A represents the intercept, sorry. 
which is 453.176. So 453.176. And B represents the slope, which is negative 50.439. Write that as minus fifty point four three nine x. So let x equals four. So four fifty three point one seven six minus fifty point four three nine. So plug in four for x. And what do we get? So when you type that in, you should get 251.42, which is B. So again, there's a lot of components to this question, right? First, you need to determine whether R is significant or not, since that will determine whether you're gonna use the equation to predict when x equals four, or you're gonna use the average of all the y values. So make sure you first determine whether linear correlation exists or not. 